talking with us today. Nice. Very interesting presentation. Make sure to check the to check out the stage channel. You know, sometimes the questions come a little bit later. Sure. Uh, yeah. So again, no. thank again. you. And I'm good. No. Yeah, have a good one. Yeah. And uh, you know, we're actually super in time, and we'll be introducing the next speaker on the stage. Um, so we have. Whoa, that's another name, Nazanin. I hope I that I say that correctly. Nazanin Delam, um, um, a senior. Oh, it's a very good name, like senior software engineer at Netflix. I don't know what that company does. I heard they do probably some time some kind of television. Uh, well, I'm, I'm of course I'm kidding. And uh, the idea of the talk is to tell us a little bit more about you know using GraphQL queries directly in Gatsby. For those of you that are not uh, familiar with the uh with the platform you know gatsby is this kind of startup they raised a lot of money very recently um and they help you to build kind of a static website using GraphQL as a backing mechanism so you, you can even load a markdown document as a graphql query and then put it on the document i disagree with the whole thing i'll, I'll be you know i'm very opinionated but happy to get my mind changed oh uh good to see you nazanin i mean is am i pronouncing that correctly nazanin. hi hi Vin. yes you can call me naz a short, good, yeah. easy version. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Um, can everyone right, see you know, me and hear me good? Um, yeah, that's you know, perfect. they say the first thing you have to do when you enter on a stage is get to know your audience and have an eye contact. But unfortunately, we are living in this that's strange world right. that I only see my camera. So I want to take a minute and I want to ask everyone who are in the room just to type the state or the country that they are connecting. So I will start. I am in San Jose, California, and everyone send over. I want to know who is in the room um, that I'm giving this talk to. All right. In the meantime, uh, make sure to share your slide just to make sure I can see everything correctly. And then I'll leave the stage sure. to you, you know, and uh, and we'll give, we'll give it a try. Awesome. Can you see my slides? Perfect. All right. I'm going to be, I'll get out of your way and, you know, enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, we have people from all over. So Cambridge, Philadelphia, Boston, Princeton, Florida, Canada, Iowa. Oh, who's joining from Fairfield, Iowa? Because I was there for eight months. <laughs> Chicago, New Jersey, Cupertino. Awesome. Thank you everyone for joining the talk and the stage. I wish I could actually see you in person, um, but I imagine you all there. Um, today we're going to talk about Gatsby and GraphQL. So second of all, if you ever heard of Gatsby and GraphQL, or are you somehow familiar, just type and a star into the channel so I know the level of people who are here and how I need to direct my talk. Um, so anyone heard of Gatsby or GraphQL before? Okay. You hate them. <laughs> Maybe you loved them after this talk then. Nice, so some level of familiarity, which is great. Okay, let's get it started. So today we're gonna cover very simple because I know I'm gonna pull everyone from an API world to a client side world. So you may not be all front end engineers, although I am. So I'm gonna cover what is Gatsby, why we use Gatsby and how to build a starter site together today from ground up and then inject GraphQL, which is the API side of the things. And we actually gonna get data from a simple JSON file. So I hope this talk will set a ground stone for all of you to later on and go and explore GraphQL and Gatsby on your own, because I can't really get a time to go through the very advanced topics today. So first of all, if you want to get to know me, I, I went a bit advanced and virtual today. There is a QR code on the screen. You can open your phone camera and scan it, and it will take you through the link tree link, which is already on the screen. And you can connect with me through different social media platforms, my blog posts, uh, shoot me an email. If you have any questions or if you want to get connected, I'll be happy to. 
I will have this QR code at the end of the talk too, so for anyone who wanna rescan it later. So let's get started. So what is Gatsby? Uh, if you haven't heard of Gatsby before, Gatsby is an static site generator. So what does that mean to be an static site generator? The static site part of it means that Gatsby will produce for us the static HTML files that we load up onto a server. Now this works differently than how a lot of websites on the web works where you visit a website and it has to query a database or call on some APIs, do some programming on the server itself in order to serve your web pages. So Gatsby is going to break that convention and have all this stuff already pre-configured ahead of time. So you will have a bunch of HTML static pages serve up to your users. Now it is important to point out that static site doesn't mean that it's not interactive. It's not the 1990s static websites. It's now different. Now static sites can be interactive and they're dynamic. So we can load JavaScript, we can load HTML files, CSS, any sort of thing. We can make API calls, we can do UI interactions and build incredible rich and immersive experiences even with the static sites, even though they're static in their nature in just being an HTML. There is no programming server-side languages running when we have a static HTML websites. So that is the static side of the things. Gatsby will generate just some static HTML, which includes everything and serve that to the server. So, what about it about Gatsby? It's also a generator, meaning that Gatsby is a tool we run on our computer most commonly, although you can run it on a server too, and it will generate content for you. You can run Gatsby locally on your computer while building a site and then they generate the final finished product, which Gatsby will speed it up, which are those HTML pages that we later on serve it on our website. Gatsby is speed up different things. It can be some HTML, integrated CSS, some JavaScript included inside HTML, and some static assets like images or different things that you want to include in your pages. So we want to think of Gatsby also as a tool that help us build a final product. So we, are, we can just throw Gatsby into an existing website. If you want to start with a Gatsby website, we have to build it with Gatsby. It's not like a tool we're going to include it in a different website and now simply, you know, it, it's going to generate that website and turn it into static HTML. And in order for Gatsby to generate all of these assets, it uses Node.js. You may all be familiar with the Node.js, which is a backend JavaScript language. Node will be running in your local machine, in your development environment, on your computer itself. And however, the final site that you ship with Gatsby does not have Node.js on the server because it's a static HTML, just a bunch of HTML files that the user can request. But Node.js will be ironically run on your development environment to generate those static sites. Now we are reaching the API side. And one of the great things about Gatsby and how that makes that data available so seamlessly and easily is that it uses GraphQL to get data from anywhere. So if you're not familiar with GraphQL, it is an evolution to make consolidated, simple, effective API calls. Imagine you have um, a database of user information and you have different API calls. So one API call is get user first name and last name. Another API call is getting the user address. Another API call is getting user payment information. If I'm the website and I need the user last name, the zip code, and the credit card number, I have to make a call to three different APIs, get all the information, and pick the three properties I need which is very overhead and overloading. Sometimes user doesn't have the you know, rich network access, especially outside US, the network access is very bad on mobile devices. 
what if I make one API call and tell what do I need? So that's where GraphQL comes to play. You make a GraphQL query call to GraphQL server and tell GraphQL, hey, give me the first name, give me the uh, zip code, and give me the credit card number. So there is only one request going to client to the server. And then GraphQL will be responsible behind the scenes to make the different API calls to responsive services, gather the data, clean and normalize, and only send back to clients the information that needed. So you're not getting this huge payload of 20, 30 properties that you're not going to use. So GraphQL is a pretty great tool, and I think you will enjoy getting into it, especially if you work on the client side and you're familiar with all the performance and networking issues that users have. This can make user life way easier and make your site way faster. However, on Gatsby, when we use GraphQL, we can also request from anywhere possible. We can have a GraphQL server requesting from Contentful, which is a CMS, or a WordPress. So we can grab data from there. We can grab data from Markdowns. So you can go to GitHub and you have a bunch of Markdowns and you just pull the data from Markdowns. You can pull data from APIs or databases or even a CSV file. So you can have your data sitting anywhere and the Gatsby GraphQL engine is able to pull that data from any sort of data repository, even a JSON. And that's all enabled with Node.js that's running on our development environment. So we have GraphQL running, we have the Node.js, and this will give us a huge range of abilities on what we could pull data, where we could pull the data from with, with Gatsby itself. If you want to use GraphQL outside Gatsby, you have to do a, a lot of initial steps. You have to build your server. You have to have a lot of underlying logic that should be able to you know, grab this data from anywhere. So that's not possible if you are using GraphQL out of bat. It's important to mention that the GraphQL and with Gatsby, it's not going to handle the data for us. So we still need to pull the things that we want out of the data but rather it will help us to gather those data and to aggregate and generate for the site. So we discussed that the GraphQL is running on the backend side of the things to pull the data from, and then we should use this data somewhere in the HTML. And Gatsby uses React.js to template the pages. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with React.js, but it's a front-end framework which you can build dynamic websites with it. Um, if you're not familiar, you can research it. I'm not going to go to React. It's a whole new word for itself. But Gatsby uses React and CSS for styling your pages and displaying the pages. Also, it's great to mention that Gatsby has a plugin architecture. What does that mean? It means that Gatsby comes out of the box with React, with GraphQL, CSS, and HTML. But if you want to add anything extra to your website, like you want to have Google Analytics, or you want to have ability to you know, do some SEO logic in there, or you want to use another language like TypeScript or another CSS processors like SAS, there are a lot of Node.js packages that we are calling plugin, either implemented by Gatsby itself or people in the community actually implement these packages that you can plug in into your Gatsby site and use many other features. So you can build very complex websites with all of these plugins. Plugin let you modularize your site customization and you can pick and choose what you want. So Gatsby is not just coming out with like hundreds of features out of the bat because you may not need all of those features, but actually it will give you a specific set of features and then you're able to bring plugins that is useful for your sites later on. So let's go through what we just briefly talked about. Gatsby is a static site generator. 
It uses GraphQL to get the data from multiple sources and uses React for templating across with HTML and CSS. And then we can have also our own plugin to build even more complex experiences for user. But another important part of it is that it actually do the hosting for you. So you don't need to worry about anything of deploying your site, where you want to deploy it, how you want to deploy it. Should you use a CDN? Should you, how do I upload to a CDN? How I handle caching? It will handle everything for you. So you just pick which hosting service do you want to use, and Gatsby will set that up for you. So. Maybe you guys have a question, why should I use Gatsby? Why should I just go ahead and build a website ground up myself? I can bring in HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and make a website, and that is totally right. But the problem is, as we move forward, even in the front end world, everything is getting more and more complex. To build an enterprise website or a high standard website, you need to have a lot to start with. You don't only need an HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's not enough. It will take you months to build an enterprise level experience. You need React. You need a lot of different libraries and tools for front end. And then it's not front end. Then it's API and mid layer. And then it's a back end layer. And then it's deployment. So it is super overwhelming to start fresh. And you have to set a lot of boilerplates. And of course, it is really hard to get everything right. Setting up all these tools, dealing with different tools, integrations. Tell me about it. Anyone has issues with all of these tools and integration and never had the issues, just talk to me because I want to learn from you. But every time I set a website ground up, I have to deal with some library issues or something different. Also, deployment is another story. You know, We all have deployment engineers working in the company who just do deployments, because deployments is also getting more and more complex as our applications getting more and more complex. So handling deployment, handling security, knowing how to handle DDoS attacks, middleman attacks, all of those things regarding security, caching, CDN, offline first, all of that is a hustle. And what Gatsby do that, it will handle all those for you, so you don't need to worry about deployment. And it sends, it's fast, it is secure in a sense that it's all static HTML. So even if someone hack your server, they're not gonna have access to a database or user information. All they're gonna have is some static HTML files. So the damage is way less than someone actually accessing a database and a data out there. And it uses all modern technology and tools. As we discussed, it uses React, it uses GraphQL, it uses Contentful for CDN. It, may, it you know, uses the best tools which is out there, which is easiest and has the best user experience and developer experience when you want to develop it. So as a developer, you have these updated tools that you're working on, so you can take it to the community and talk about it. And also, they have a really good support. They have paid engineers who are actually working on Gatsby all the time. Um, so you will be rest assured if there is issues, it will be prioritized and it will be work on. And it's an open source, so you can actually go ahead and make your own features too, no problem. So we talked about all of this with Gatsby. So I know if I talk more, no one's going to understand until I actually show you how what is Gatsby in practice. So um, I'm, I put everything in the slides in case you want to get back to slides, which I'm going to share it with you later on. But um, I'm going to go through some of it in a slide, and I will move to a code um, IDE. And I'm actually going to, we will walk together and build this website. And then we will use GraphQL in a very simple scenario to build some information to our website. So the first thing you do when you want to use Gatsby and you want to build a website is just install it with NPM or Yarn. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but these are a package management tools for client libraries. So you can do NPM installs globally on your machine or, or not, and then you install Gatsby client 
package, it will take some time. So I've already done that. So I will not walk you through this in practice. After you did install it, you can verify that Gatsby is actually installed by just doing Gatsby info. And that will actually uh, shoot out some information about Gatsby and tell you that it's actually installed. Not sure why my video is not loading, but we can bypass that. I can show you later on. And then you will create a website, a boilerplate. You can use their starter project, which has everything set for you. Um, so it's called Gatsby a Starter Hello World. Um, it's a website which does Hello World, the famous Hello World programming website. So you just do Gatsby new, and then you the name of your site, whatever that you want to name it. And then you just put the GitHub address to the starter repo. They have a lot of different starter repos. So if you wanted to come out of the bat with GraphQL, you can actually pull out their starter repo for GraphQL. They you can pull out a starter repo for Contentful. So they have different options. It depends on what features you want to have on your website. But this one is the simplest one. So after you installed um, and created it, it actually run your website and it says that, hey, you know, your website is available on localhost. And then you can go and look at your website. So I've already done that. Um, I need to go ahead and reshare my screen. From here, moving forward, we're actually going to build the rest of this together. So let's see how we can do that. I'm going to stop sharing and then reshare. OK, let's see. Can everyone see the code here? Awesome. OK, let's do this. So. Here we do, I already went through and did the first step, which is building a brand new Gatsby website. And now you can see if I go through the directory, let me zoom in a little bit here. So you have a bunch of files here. You see it's already coming with some libraries. You may know Predator, you may not know, but it's already coming with some setup for your development environment. So you don't need to actually set these different things up. Prettier is used for your uh, co cl code cleanness and it will apply some JavaScript coding as standards, pardon my cat behind, um, into your code by default. Uh, so you don't ship your code, which is not clean. And you can see there is only one file here, which we need to pay attention, which is our index.js file, which includes the hello world in here that it will show to the display. Um, and then you use this with React. Uh, if you're familiar with React, this is a React component. It's a basically a JavaScript function that spit out some HTML um, over here. So now what we want to do, we want to add a header here. We want to add a React header and we want to type a title which comes from our GraphQL query. So we're going to go ahead and do this a step by step. So what I'm going to do here is to add a new component. I usually name my component uppercase um, in React and just it would be a simple component. So I'm just going to copy paste. That's what we do as developers from here. I'm just going to turn it in into an arrow function because I love arrow functions. And this component is going to just return a header. So it's going to return an H, um, H1. Or let's put it actually inside an HTML5 header. So and then the header component going to have an H1, which is a title. And then what this has to take in, we're going to pass this function a title, and this is going to display it. Simple. So this is called props. If you are not familiar with React, 
It's a function arguments we passing to this function in runtime. React will run this function, pass the title to this H1 element, and show it to the page. So now that we have our header JS, you see as I save, Gatsby automatically rebuilt for you so you can double check uh, your website as you're going through. So what we're going to do here, we got to um, import that file that we just um, made here. So we're going to import a component name header from that header file that we just created. And then what we do here, again, I'm going to convert this to um, our function because I just love our functions, nothing personal. I feel like it's way cleaner. If you're a JavaScript coder, you, you may know what I say. And what this is going to return, it's going to return a bunch of HTML. So it's going to return our hello world. But on the top of that, it's going to return the header with the title that we are passing on the components. These are very reactive stuff. So if you have questions on this, I highly recommend looking into React Docs. So let's say our title is Hello from API Days NYC. And then there is an error here because all the time that when you do React returns, you need to have it in a parent component. And one way to do that is just create a fragment here that holds these two children. So you only have to have one parent when you return in a component and it's a reactive thing. So here we go. Um, now we do have our, you know, um, our return function. Actually, we don't need this anymore because I'm already returning a print this. So no need for this. So our index.js is taking the header and it's actually building it. We are passing the title. So now I want to show you how this look like. So let me share the other screen. This is so hard to actually do it on the multiple screen. So now you can see that now we have our title. Yay. It's passed through the header. And then we have the hello world already here. So great. Now this is actually loaded a title, which is an static. Now what we want to do in the next step is to actually load a dynamic title. And that will come from GraphQL. So how to do that is the easiest way to pull the data um, in Gatsby for the sake of this example is to use a JSON file, which comes out of the box with Gatsby. So you can access any information in this JSON file. And what I'm going to do is just to add um, some bunch of keys and data in here. I'm going to call it site metadata. And then it's going to hold the title. And it's going to be hello from API days with GraphQL. So this is going to be the different title that the one that we have there. So we're just going to save this. And we're going to pull this title later on with GraphQL from this JSON file. So in order to do that, the first thing we have to do is actually import GraphQL uh, into our um, header. So GraphQL is available in Gatsby library. So you can pull it from there. So you just import GraphQL here. And um, you import it from Gatsby itself. And we have it available. This is a out of the box Gatsby GraphQL query. Uh, there is a lot of advanced topic to it, but let's just build a simple query with this. And then you guys can dig in more later on if you have questions. So how we actually build a GraphQL query is just by creating, uh, calling this GraphQL and then passing it in string literal. So this is basically, imagine it as a function call that will call GraphQL. And then you can have any sort of query. If you're not familiar with GraphQL queries, imagine it as you know SQL query or any sort of that database query. Hello. When, 
Uh, Are we out of time? going a little bit over time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to actually go over the, yeah. um, over my, um, let me just reshare it. I'm going to over the slides because if you have questions later on and if you're building this yourself and having problems, reach out to me separately. But we're going to go over the slides right now because I have the same thing here. So I can go way faster. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, so we're gonna build a query here, which is gonna access our site and in the site metadata, it's gonna pull out the title. This is a page query and what happens later on, we're gonna put the data inside our title and pass it to that component. Simple and fast and then later on, it's gonna load it the same way that it was before. But the question raised here is why are we passing the whole data to the page? Because here we're passing the query to the whole page and then the page is passing it to the header. Why can't the header can query itself the database? So a simple component, isolated component can query the database, not the page itself. This is a different topic. So you have multiple components in the page each of them are able to query a database or data repository. And that's where static queries come to play. Um, static queries are super simple. There is a query and there is a render. So you pass the same query inside and then you pass your HTML inside the render. So this is how it's gonna look like with a static query. We copy paste the same query that we had here and then it passes the data and then we pass that data through a function to an HTML. And you see we are pulling out the title from this HTML. There is another great way of doing it. If you're familiar with React hooks, I don't go deeply. This is more of like client side thing. But if you're familiar with React hooks, you actually you can use the static query hook, which pulls the data out of your JSON file and display to the UI. Uh, the whole point of this talk is to see the power of, you know, GraphQL and static queries, because originally we can make an API call usually before a page loads to grab all the information and display it. But in this way, with a static queries, you don't need to page for, wait for the whole page to load, and it happens on every and each component inside the page itself. We are really, really, really out of time, a little bit in late. So make sure to, oh yeah, you, you can share for a couple of seconds your chart code in case the people want to get in touch with you. It just, you know, fortunately we have a schedule here. Uh, but thank you for your talk. Uh, was very appreciated. Make sure to check the stage chat. Maybe somebody has some question. I didn't really check it out. Um, and, you know, you have nothing references if anybody wants to get in touch.